particular situation gave it that speed. At altitude, at low altitude. Anyway, this went down to New Zealand, and lo and behold, they needed a test pilot to fly this airplane when it was put together. Anybody guess who that was? Steve Hinton. Yes, Mr. Hinton, Mr. Steve Hinton, who you will see fly this aircraft today. I don't know who he's selected for his uh, navigator. As you know, they built 7,000, 700 and some of these aircraft. There, Steve. His navigator today will be Chris Fahey, one of our fine pilots here at the uh, Twins of Fame. Brian says you are right. Yeah, it was it was so big that it actually is partially out of the Bombay. So they would, it, you saw it in, in a picture. It looks like a giant, an elongated steel drum. And it would literally just fit up into the Bombay half in and half out. And uh, it was a powerful explosive. That's why they called it a blockbuster, I guess. Here's something. All right, get your cameras ready.
Mr. Steve Hinton. Well, thanks for all coming, or all of you coming. I really appreciate it, and uh, this means a lot to us. And the double drive's full of cars, uh, so we're awful happy to have you. Anybody have any real questions they want to know about the Wooden Wonder? He asked what it sounds like inside because it's wood. Um, you can really hear the props in the engines. It's got a real hum to it. I don't know if uh, any of you remember that 633 Squadron movie. That woo, 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 woo. That's real. And for one thing, it's a super privilege. Uh, this aircraft is actually owned by uh, Charles Summers. He's a businessman up in Sacramento and a uh, big contributor to Planes of Fame. And uh, we asked him if we could uh, fly it for our group and uh, he was very happy to do it. But um, uh, it's a real piece of history. You know, um, the airplane is uh, big and heavy. It's fast. Um, it's British as hell. Uh, I say that if you guys know anything about British airplanes, you know, the mint to the uh, mind, or I would say the way they lay out the cockpit is, is different than the way we do it, and uh, the way the controls operate, they're different as well, but uh, the airplane's pretty easy to fly, you know, they're all built for 19-year-olds, you know, all these airplanes are real easy to fly, you have the proper training, and fortunately, uh, you know, through the years we've flown enough different airplanes, and, uh, you know, flying this airplane, it just uh, adds to the excitement of everything that we can do around here, but... Um, that's with a, one of the engines inoperative, and in this case, if that engine, the left engine, was inoperative, it would be the minimum speed you could control the airplane at full power so with this engine running. And it's, believe it or not, it's 170 knots. Yeah, so that's really high, so that's way after takeoff. So there's quite a time between the time you roll down the runway and you leave the ground to where you actually have a safe single engine speed. And it just has to do with the horsepower and the placement of everything, and it's got a very small vertical stabilizer as well. But the controls are, are like a lot of British airplanes, very well balanced. Like I say, they're heavy, but they're very effective. And uh, um, it's like a school bus when you're driving it around, flying it around, because you hit the brakes and it's, you know, you open the coolant doors and you hear like a bus brakes again. Everything's pneumatic, not everything, but the brakes and the coolant doors are pneumatic and you operate them with your finger with a trigger on the uh, on the yoke and then the rudder pedal selects which brake to use so it takes takes a little bit and I always joke about if you ever fly a British airplane the first time you fly it you don't chew gum you can't do too many things at once because it's not natural for an American pilot because we're used to using toe brakes <clears throat> um, Frank was asking how it compares to P-38 well it's a uh, black and white difference P-38 is a fighter, this is a bomber. You know, 38 is uh, uh, much more maneuverable, much more, I would say, easier to manage, to do it precisely what you want to do with it. But uh, here again, uh, the way it's built and how it's built, it's, you know, really was a leading edge airplane in its day, so. And shoulder to shoulder, um, Kevin Eldridge and I were flying a Paul Allen's uh, Mosquito when he first got it. And with the two of us in there, we laughed at each other because it was like flying a Luscom. It is that small in the cockpit, just like that. But th that's because that one's a dual control airplane. But uh, Chris, you could see, was sitting behind me, which gave a, an overlap of shoulders, so to speak. You know, it was built for one reason, be small, fast, and, and drop bombs. So it wasn't about comfort. That's what the difference is between the different Mosquitoes. I've flown uh, this version and uh, the uh, Mark 35, which was the high altitude version. And uh, they're similar in a lot of ways. The other uh, Mosquito that's up in Canada has a two-stage supercharged engine that was built to go to 35,000 feet. And um, it is a little slower than this in this type of flying around here um, and a little heavier. But, um, you know, it was a remarkable airplane. There's a good story. The Canadians bought, uh, I think the story goes, 12 P-38s after World War II to map all of Canada, high altitude mapping. And after a year, they couldn't maintain them, couldn't, couldn't work them in the cold weather. And then they bought eight mosquitoes and did the whole country and didn't have any trouble with them at all because, you know, they're pressurized cockpits, they're heated. You know, those Merlin engines are used to flying high like that and uh, having an extra person or two with you, it makes a big difference out, you know, out of the wilderness, especially navigating. That's wood. And so the tail was cut off of it and it was just sitting there. And uh, 
they spent millions of dollars on this thing just to get what it is because all the, uh, the way it is now, all the wood has been replaced. Uh, all the components have been overhauled and uh, they're, well, you still got to get, well, yeah, anything's possible. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you know, the Mustangs have been built from nothing, but uh, if there was a higher demand for a mosquito, yeah, yeah you could do it for sure. We also checked out the beat and besides me, well, on this particular airplane, there's uh, Kevin Eldridge, who's one of our guys here, has flown mosquitoes, and uh, Stu Dawson has flown mosquitoes. Um, there's a guy, um, and I'm embarrassed, can't remember his name right now, in West in Virginia, flies a Yegans airplane. A uh, very skilled guy, does a great job. And then uh, two new mosquito guys up in uh, uh, Kelowna, Canada. That was that uh, Mark 35 up there. Uh, they recently got checked out in it. And, like I say, it's not hard to fly once you know how everything works, and if you have, uh, you take your time and you get a good briefing with it, and uh, it, it's not, uh, it's not magic. It's magic, but it's not uh, brain surgery. He asked about the process of wood building. This versus a Howard Hughes spruce goose. So you mean? I assume it's very similar. This is a. Uh, this is a laminated, uh, like the few sizes, is a laminated uh, structure, so it's got an inner core and an outer core with a, like a foam fill kind of epoxy. Epoxy glue was actually um, developed for this, uh, for the Mosquito. The first, it was right there at Duxford, there's a factory where they developed the first two-part glue. And they're as strong as hell, it really is, as long as it's not deteriorating. Here's a good story for you, Kermit Weeks, uh, from Fantasy of Flight in Florida, 25 years ago, got a mosquito out of England, and uh, they did all the mechanical work on it, it's ready to go, and to get a ferry permit for it, to get a certification to fly it across, they had to get a professional wood sniffer to come and sniff the airplane. I'm not kidding you, the guy's, uh, the story goes, you know, he, he, he's real quiet, and